Because the mage priests, or the slan, required longer periods of rest, the most intelligent lizardmen of their kind, the skink priests, became the daily leaders of their people. Though they did lose the knowledge to rebuild all of their technology and what they used before, at the very least under their leadership, they were able to rebuild the roads connecting temple cities and they were able to rebuild their broken civilization. While that was going on, the elves of Ulthawan, and only the most educated of their elven kind, knew that anything at all lived in Lustria. Those who would later come under the rule of Belshinar, the phoenix king of that day, they would land by the temple city of Pahox, and after an interaction with the land living in their city, half of the elves were cut down intentionally, but the rest were allowed to leave. It was meant to be a stark reminder to their people to not intrude in Lustria. Over time, other creatures began to find the jungles of Lustria, elves, skaven, and much more. We get to see another one of those today as the Great Wanderer Orc War begins, just as the final battle takes place against the elves of Wulthawan. No one will intrude in our jungle anymore. It's a new day and a new time to destroy more high elves. We have a new event too, knowledge regained. If I commit to research, we'll gain what? 22 hour power reserve for the winds of magic. You know what, I'll take it. We've taken mud isles and Tippin will be joining Nakai for future campaigns. Right now though, we need to go after more high elves. Why don't we march right over here right away? While that is, is really going on, we're going to have Block Maul, the last spawn, getting ready with a new army. So what are you going to pick up now? You could use more units. Sure, that is very true. We've got a new hero, Shield Captain Kotlaw. They'll be working together. Now, we're using Global Recruitment. I'll need some cheaper units, then I'll need some better units later. We'll take four groups of Skink Cohorts. We'll take some Red Crested Skinks, too. Actually, we'll make it two groups and more Red Crested Skinks for armor-piercing damage. They're pretty good at that. Then afterwards, we can afford maybe one or two bigger units. I don't know what yet, but we'll take one group of Zars Warriors for one. I could use more Regiments of Renown. We'll take the Pakopak Cohort. I don't need to recruit them yet. That would only be a waste of gold. The Shredder of Lustria might go to them. It depends on what I'm able to afford. So now, let's get ready to fight some Elves. Elves are old, sure, but not as old as Nakai. Nakai was fighting and killing while they were still learning how to walk and read. Well, Nakai, you're nearly there now. I know that we've got a lot of enemies to fight, but if we take out one at a time, we won't have to worry about them in the future. And hello, savage orcs are visiting me again. Now who's going to win? A bunch of naked orc boys or Nakai? Impossible. Nakai is naturally nude all the time. They choose to not be with their little loincloths. Well, not fully. They're not committing. They're only halfway committing. So Lord Croak, you've got a level three into your Supreme Shield of the Old Ones. The cooldown will be much lower. It does last for 18 seconds, and it negates all forms of damage for, wow, 44%. That's really powerful. That's all types of damage. Magical, ranged, physical, all of it. Okay. You'll be ready pretty soon to go out and fight. We'll wait to spend more of our gold on new units. Hopefully, we can afford a new army. I think we could. But now we just need to end our turn. We could end up fighting a high elven stack or maybe a few savage orcs led by Nerd Jug Spider Killer. Look at that little goblin leading all his big orcs. Goodbye, Clan Eshin. I never saw you, so maybe you really were good at your job. But then again, you're not because you're gone. Or maybe they're trying to get me to think they're gone. Ah, well. The savage orc said, you know what? We're going to pack up and leave now. Sorry to bother you. Which means we can come over here to attack Lorishian. Well, Lorishian. We'll greet you in just a minute. Now we need Block Mall to move up north. From right over here, you're at 12 out of 20 units. Can I afford anything else for you? Let's have a look. Go back to your encampment. Again, we've got to keep it cheap if we can help it. So what would be very cheap for me? Most of these are not. We do have Lord Croak, and that's really all that I need right now. Skinks would be the way to do it. All right, I'll take a lot of them. Then we'll get a few units from my Regiments of Renown. I'll probably get two flying ones and then my Pakopak cohort for some mounted units too. And sure, we might lose a lot at each battle, but we do have Lord Croak and we do have a very powerful veteran in our army. Shield Captain Kotlaw, Lord Croak, and Block Maul, the last spawn. You can upgrade your horde building. If you get to level three, you can reduce your upkeep by 5%. Not bad. We'll do it right away. Sure, I need money, but we're about to get money. Come on, Nakai. Let's go get some money. 
Oh, here I go a clubbing again. That's a big army, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Why don't we get at least two towers? We'll go onto the freaking walls. And we'll punch a few of them really, really hard. It'll be unpleasant. Now, what did I unlock? Did I unlock a new upgrade? I did. Okay. Crazy Den Hunting Pack. I thought I had that already. Either way, we're continuing to get a lot of really cool things. Now, what did we unlock over here? Let's see. We got our ability, cheaper Croxigores and secret Croxigores. We've got weapon strength. So we only need two more. Then we'll max all of that out. Then we'll finally work on Sri Lanka. Don't worry, Sri Lanka. I didn't forget about you. We have two siege towers where I've got units that might end up losing quite a few during the course of this battle. What a beautiful scene, by the way. We get to witness what's here and eventually own it. Hey, elves, you see that mountain? It's my mountain. I call it Kill Elf Mountain. You like that name? It's a pretty good name. Here we have one of their elven commanders, really the sole army of Teclis that currently remains in southern Lustria. Well, if we specify to his own armies, then really the only one in the world. His elves are waiting here for us to arrive. After an initial foray, we'll send in our reinforcements, and here's a noble of Ulthawan. They do have quite a few elven units here. It's not like they have a small garrison army. They have a garrison army and their main combative army too. But really, they don't have the balance and really the force of arms to beat us. And now my elves are here. They'll be using a lot of arrows. That's why I've got to really expend one or two groups at a time to send all of them at the same time. Only because there's only so much over here that I could hit without just getting shot the hell up. You know how trying to navigate through a town can be. It can be a nightmare. So instead, we use two units to take a lot of damage. One of them is the Legion of Chakwa. They have that special ability to negate some ranged damage that can help them out when it comes to tanking enemy attacks. But right now, the Elves of Ulthuan, they know better. They know that they're going to have a very tough battle ahead of them. Or behind them. A few of them just got poked in the back. And usually, they're all right with that. They're like, hey, not bad. But our pokes are a little bit deadlier. They're still fighting their way out. But right now, you can see who we have coming. They were on their way to help us attack. Tippin's busy out here helping too. Tippin is always helping. There's a chain lightning, a fairly powerful spell, but it does wander. It really has its own will and that's unfortunate, but they're on their way now. Tippin will be casting spells for a little bit with a nice wind blast going through so many of their ranks. It's nearly a shame what's happening to them. It's a funny shame. There's Tippin launching a fireball at another group. Unfortunately, it was blocked by the terrain, but I wonder what other spells he's going to pick up. I've already used a Wind Blast. He's moving over here. Look at him. He is so aggressive with our enemies that he even dropped a stone. He took the time to drop a stone on their heads. He's like, look, if I don't have magic, I'll throw rocks at you. A lot of rocks. Or magic is being picked up. Good way to break through the gate. You can see up here right now that we're still crashing through a lot of their elves, but we also now have our Dread Saurian who's coming. It does take a minute, largely due to the size, and trying to get into the gate can be a hassle. It's like a little bit more to the left, a little bit more to the right. Okay, now pivot, squeeze, and eventually you get them in. It just takes a little while, really. So if we have a look at the health right now, we can see how dramatically harmed they are. Aura of Inertia is being used right now. That Noble's having a bad time. Tippin's killed 136, and he's weakened many more. So by indirect, you know, course of action here, well, no, by direct, indirectly, we're also weakening them for them to be killed by other units. There we go. I figured it out. I had to navigate myself out of that maze, my own self-made maze. And now here comes more of our Croxigores. I'll have to eventually spread them out. I probably have way too many in one group, but I digress. The Curse of the Midnight Wind keeps many of them debuffed. Now they're having a hard time landing hits, but we have an easier time hitting them. 
I've got two connoisseurs here helping me fight. And here comes a hunting pack right behind them just to bother them. It's free for me to use, so I can use it. Get them fought a melee for a minute. Here comes more units. Here are cold ones. Taking a bite out of my problem. And naturally, we just have our constant assault of large dinos. They're like our Pokemon. Really deadly Pokemon. And not meant for pockets at all. That Dread Saurian, though, makes for a great tank. I haven't gotten, like, you know, an astounding amount of kills yet, but it's been sufficient. It's been okay. So, if we look at the battle again, there's a lot of dead elves already. We're just handling a lot of their other units, too. Their silver helms. And a few spearmen. Yeah, those are just my summoned units that went away. How many did we take out over here? Another fireball is right on them. Why not? We don't really care for that noble too much. Dread Saurians at, what, over 120 kills? Yeah. We've got Nakai, who's used Primal Roar just to negate some damage. Oh, look at them fight. Those carnosaurs are great. Anti-large and all that. It's a very effective tool to have against any horseman. The guy is now is grappling with a few units who are left. Most of them are trying to get the hell out of here. They said, you know what? We had enough. We're done here. Dread Saurian doesn't really care. Most of the units on the walls are just beginning to run. That noble skill 21 of our units. My Sir Tippin has been busy at 163 for kills. Leave alone magic, of course. But... Deckless, you just didn't attack my vassal. You could have lived here. I would have been cool with it. I could share. If you'll let me have it. And we send in more lizard men in the final quarter just to help them push over anyone who's still here. White Lions killed over 50 units. So they're spread out on two sides. Third Shatter Maul is here. It's little shields. Legion of Chakma. Now we get to move up. Find more of these folks. These fine elven folk. Folk them. Folk them very hard right now. There we go, Dread Soaring. Good job. Now Nakai's here to stare at you for a minute and hit you. He's like, yeah, you know what? I think I figured it out. Did you just get hit with a javelin in the head? Elf man, I believe you did. It's a razor to hunting pack. What's left of all the elves? It's not a lot. They've been here for a little bit too. You're lucky I don't have the engine of the gods. Dread Saurian's just kind of here right now, trying to move through. Instead of just fighting, he's like, let me through. 220 kills. Fair cold ones haven't gotten any kills yet. Hey, man, they could get lucky one day. Now, the rest of my army's moving in, but they're all about to break. So many Croxigors. Sometimes they block each other. Those are brave elves to stay here even for as long as they have. I know they're going to leave in a minute. That Dread Saurian has anything to say about it, and he hasn't shut up yet. Let's look out again. I think a lot of them are beginning to shake. Just a few of them. There's even some units back here that have come back to try to retake the gatehouse. That isn't that daring. That's how long this battle was for us. So they fought well. The ultimate battle against non Tyrian elves. In our way, our Dreadsaurian killed 284. Still, you can see the amount of damage he takes, though, just due to the size. 
just being hit all the time. Parks of Glory is attacked over here, and now we won the battle. It's over. The town belongs to us. We won the battle. Goodbye, Lorishian. We didn't lose any one unit. Only 12 left in one of our groups, but we still killed a lot of them. We were fairly careful in that fight. My Dread Saurian usually does take a lot of damage, and now it's all here you go. Enjoy that. We've gained more favor. We've killed an enemy leader. Minus five to melee attack for flying units. I mean, that could be handy one day. It isn't right now. I think I would like to work on getting a upkeep reduction. Yeah, so we're going to do that. I don't need more growth. I would like to ambush when possible. Though, do I really want to? Not really that much. Actually, I'll get untainted. I'll get rid of corruption if we travel through lands. Now, Shield Captain Octo will give you, let's see here, more health. Yeah, indeed. Take that. Do you need a new talisman? Sure. I mean, you might as well just pick it up. Pick it up and use it. I have no followers for you to use. And Tippin, you're at rank 21. You're already immortal. No one was shocked about that. That's a debuff for flying units, too. Whenever he's casting. You know what? We'll do it. It's a pretty big debuff for flying. It's pretty situational, but, you know, if we have the option, why not use it? Now we're coming down here to go handle the Golden Colossus. After that, we'll have taken care of every single High Elven faction down south. We'll need to go up north afterwards, but... We'll have more to fight. I might have to get rid of my Dread Saurian for a little while. It depends. I don't think I can make more gold as much as I want to. I mean, I wish I could. But there's no real way for me to make more gold in my main army. And I'm already trying to make things work out over here. I've got a lot of skinks, and now it's time to move over to the Blood Hall. It might not be an easy siege battle, but we're still going to give it a go. We're still going to try it out see what we can do. If I lose the battle, so be it. We had a good trial run, but now we're done with our current turn. What a tiny garrison. Goodbye now. I'm not really getting a lot of gold for conquering you. What a waste of my time. No. Oh, Teclas, hello there. How the mighty have fallen indeed, huh? Poor guy. No, I don't feel bad for him. Let's leave. If he reconquers it, well, I'll come back after him. But he's all alone. What do you have? You've got a few Illyrian Reaver archers. You've got your Frostheart Phoenix. Have fun. I'll be over here. Actually having fun. Non-sarcastic fun. Alright, block them all. It is time for you to land at Blood Hall. Okay, you'll wait here for a turn. We're not going to give you your new units yet. It's not time. But if I can just continually begin to conquer in two different directions, or even the same general direction with two armies, oh boy. Ah, here we go. Celestial Beneficence. So we'll take more money from our vassals. There we go. If I keep on doing that every three turns, hey, I'll actually have a decent amount of gold. A new person has taken the Sword of Cain. If it wouldn't take so long for the elves to actually draw out the blade, I would love to do an Albion campaign for Nakai, but they usually draw it until much later, so I would need to do other things until that point that I don't have to go all the way over there to go pick up the blade, but that would be a lot of fun. Imagine Nakai having the Sword of Cain. If it wasn't so far now, I would go pick it up. Let's go up north. Again, I'll use all of my favor to give me more gold every three turns. Then I won't need to worry about making as much money. I do make, what, 88 favor per turn? Not bad. Now it's time for our first siege battle. I'll take my two flying units, River Dactyls and otherwise, and then I'll take my Pock -po Cohorts. What a fun name. All right, we're losing 1,400 per turn. Well, now we can go to the Blood Hall. Hello. Oh, you've only got a tiny garrison. If it wasn't so tiny, I would be more than happy to fight that battle out, but it's way too tiny. Now, I want my temple back for Quetzal, but... I would rather give it to Itzel. It was plus three rather than plus one. Do we only need plus one? Yeah, we only need plus one for Quetzal. But now I'm pretty close to having my top tier buff for Itzel. Look at that. Look at how powerful we are. We've got so many diff like different tools here and things to help us out. And I'm only losing 1,300 per turn. My Vassal Tribute is up. For Lord Crook, what are you at? Rank four? Good. I've already given you Supreme Shield of the Old Ones. Now, I'm going to give you Deliverance of Itza 1. Mighty Lord Krog spawns a small sun that, when it explodes, causes abject devastation. Funnily enough, abject. Huh. 
Abject. I don't know how I just said it. It was really weird. All right, ring seven. Shield Captain Cotelaw. You're going to fight on the ground for a while because I don't want to pay for your mounts. Yeah, we're having to budget here. Us lizard men know how to budget very well. Lizard Accounting 101. It's the first class you take after you spawn in. Monstrous Kinship. A battle-scarred Thor's old blood has come to your attention at the urging of the mage priest. More feral than his brethren, he has a natural empathy with a great piece of Lustria. To rally to him as one of their own with much fasting and meditation. I do wish it was a reduction in upkeep. That would actually be handy, but recruitment cost is really not a big deal for me. Now, Block Maw. Why don't you come over here? Maybe you can go find a few orcs. Yeah, that'll be your job. You'll go fight them. And you'll travel up north. Now, Mazda Mundi is not doing well. He only owns, what, one location? Grey Rock Point? The Hunt Marshal is really hunting down any of her kind with impunity. Yeah, why don't you join me? You should. Do you have gold? Maybe he'll pay me for it. Okay, he won't pay me 3000 even though I'm about to save you. I'm about to save this whole lizard's career, man. And he's not willing to pay me. You are cheap as hell. He's like, I need that for my snacks. Okay, calm down, Masamundi. There we go. Itza, will you join me? You will not join me. There's no option for you to join me. I wish you would. I would love to have Gorok, but that is all right. I forgive you, man. Much of our kind has begun to die off. That's really tragic. Okay, now we have Mazda Mundi. There are two agents up here. I could use them. But no, they're taking my money away from me. If I want an agent, I'll pick one up on my own. I don't need you to help me out with that. There we are. And now we can have a bit more money. Oh, they were about to lose it all. Yeah, Mazda Mundi was about to die. Fortunately, I was here to save the day. Well, kind of. I was here to relocate them. <laughs> yeah, we'll march over and land. Savage orcs, you're not doing too well. Not that I really care. All right, let's move up. We're going to Huolotl. We'll take Huolotl. Oh, hello, Choli. I mean, if you want to take that, feel free to, but I would rather you go after the lands of Luther Harkin. I wonder, are we going to have a battle over here now? Well, come on down, Nakai the Wanderer. Oh, I've been ambushed. Hell yeah. Okay, let's go fight them. Urk, you're pretty daring. I like you, Urk. The ambushing army is here to fight us. And that's really fine. We can take care of it. You know who we have as part of our team. So they have two armies coming to attack. If it was really any Imperial force or Elven force, I really believe we would have lost. Greenskins are really good at what they do. And that's just charging in, screaming wah, sometimes slapping you with your own arm. They're really good at that. Now their forces are piling in on ours. You can see how many thousands are advancing, each one violent, each one hungry for battle. But here comes my own carnosaurs, even Tippin charging in for a little smacky smacky. And here comes magic. Tippin's magic. They're debuffed now. These are riding units. So they can do so much damage. And here comes my own warriors. Ready to counter them. I'm sending in mostly the spears. Tippin's wrath is attacking. Tippin's pet dog. Favorite pet, favorite one. Is also attacking. That's the Dredsorian. And Tippin is also pretty ticked off. These carnosaurs, they're good. They work together. It's kind of a buddy buddy thing. Here we go now. Tippin's magic. Now, what could that be before I show you anything else? Let's have a good look at what that could be. Landing. A comet of Cassandora. If I remember correctly, it actually only got one kill. It weakened all of them, but only one kill. All that damage that it did only one kill there's a lot of blood there there's a wind blast now at least getting a few kills for tippin you can see how the first advance force has just been pummeled 
There's not too much left to them. Here's our cohort. Oh, scratching its okay. Well, my very fancy cohort. Savage works continue to try to well against us. It's not going super hot. There are those who will eventually return. Most of them don't have any kills at all. That's pretty wild. Over here, we have Savage Orc Biggins. They've got a melee defense of 24, melee attack of 43, which is actually pretty good for, you know, Biggins. A charge bonus of what? 34. A physical resistance of 25%, so quarter of all damage gone. So while that battle has been happening, while we've been able to wipe out the first ambushing force, we now have got to form up for the second advance. They're not quite done attacking me yet. That means that we need to be here defending against them. So here comes a relatively big army, and we're still fighting and chasing. I'm sure, they'll be tired, but it's kind of hard to stop chasing if you know they might come back and attack you. It doesn't have to be a for sure prospect, so we might as well just spend some time out here. The investment or spending is too minimal for me to care. Now, we've got another part of the battle to worry about. Only 22 kills for this group of orc biggins. I'll leave the savage part out. The Legion of Chocolate took some big lumps. 37 only killed from their group. The Croxagores are now moving into position. We're going to use these guys to flank a bit. My main line force will, of course, try to hold up the initial advance. And a few will charge back. They always do. You know how they work out. Now, my Croxagores are also being attacked by the fledgling remains of their initial army. So now they're charging in, hoping to do something, I suppose. It's a waste of time. While that's happening, we've got even more of a battle. That's about to finally begin. In case you didn't see how many orcs there are here, it is extensive. It is so many orcs. You turn left, you turn right, orc. You turn behind you, orc. It's just a lot of orc. There's one chain lightning. We summoned in some units too, just in some attempt to distract and to weaken them. Orc no like electricity. There is another comet of Casandora. Doing some damage, keeping a few orcs down. As you can see from the blood spurts and remnants of their limbs. Then our dinotastic units are approaching. Tired from their previous fight, they're still moving in, as are our proxigores and a few other infantry units too. So everyone can be hit. Every orc over here. So we're not done, but let's have a look now. We're going to zoom out and go over the fight. On the right and left flanks, we had all those savage orc boys. They're now being, or they have been eliminated. I brought in my Croxagores from the left. They're attacking several air boys. Usually I don't have the manpower to go after air boys too. I've used my summon in the units to at least attack and distract some other archers. There are some that I've not hit, but they are not dealing, dealing as much damage as they could be if I wasn't trying to strike them. Our Jordan has 175 kills. Right now we've got Nikaya 62 and also debuffed foes. There's a Curse of the Midnight Wind keeping all of these units weaker than they were. There's a Fireball from Tippin just adding in some support damage to them. And more Crocs Gores are falling on these enemies of ours, giving them a good old slap slap. Like that. You just saw an orc fly through the screen because they just gave them a good old slap slap. There's not too many of them left. And it looks like we've won the battle. We gained over 5,000 gold. That'll last us for a few turns. And now we're at rank 29. I can take more gold, but no. We're going to take up uh, replenishment. It was a pretty big orc army. If that was like really any other faction, I think that would have been a loss for me because Savage Orcs couldn't deal so much damage. Oh, here we go. A prize hunter. With the best will in the old world, something capable of uprooting trees can be rather tricky to harness. Now... Let's see here. My cold ones, Carnosaurs, and Dreadsaurian units will cost me 10% less. 
absolutely good. Goodbye, Urk and Spider Killer. Well, we know what we need today. No, you don't get any armor. Did it go into your inventory? Let's see over here. Ah, here we go. Prize Hunter, you better take it. Understood. Well, now we're going to reduce the overall cost of our stuff. Okay, here's Fervent. Do some more corruption. We're Shield Captain Nocto. We're going to give him, let's see here, Scarred Veteran rank 3. I don't know why he keeps doing that. He keeps going over to the other screen. <laughs> okay, rank 22 for High Seer Tippin. A Stegadon. Very powerful, but I'm going to wait. You get it kind of late. I mean, you might as well just wait for the Ancients. It does a lot more damage. And then I could just wait for the Engine of the Gods at 27. It's only three levels more. If you've come that far, might as well. That should be like a rank 40 thing. In my view, I would change it up to make it feel more natural in progression. Okay, what's over here? How many? Not that many. Okay, well, they're all gone now because I've already beaten their initial army. So what we'll do, we'll put it into Itzel. Done. The orcs really were dealt a huge blow after losing that location. No, I already beat their army in that ambush. I wasn't really keen on fighting them again. Now, you can move somewhere. Where are you going to move? Can't quite make it up there. Okay, and they do have an army that will probably grow by next turn. These are all pretty good. More growth. You can recruit faster too. I do like the concept. It took me a very long time to get here. Communal grounds. Here we go. Minus five percent upkeep. Spaces such as this are where the lizardmen train to fulfill their roles in a never-ending struggle of the eternal war. Done. Only one turn to build it. And in one more turn, we're gonna have a pretty big battle. That we are. All right, did I lose my money? My upgrade of money taking? I believe I did. So here we go, 50%. I wish it was like a permanent boost. That would have been nice. So now we're only losing 941 per turn, but now I'll just have to really upkeep it every three turns. Okay, Glyphs of Defiance, we'll take that too. It's five turns. I'm gonna to begin to use these all the time now as I have the points for it, the favor for it. Now all of our defenses will be stronger so that hopefully they can hold a little bit. The Skaven are going to be some big fights too. Those are going to be fun. Oh, hello, Ikit. He's on his way. Nikai will begin to move to the east. It's about time to conquer other enemies. Itza did indeed conquer that cavern. Oh, good. I didn't have to do it. Okay, if we move to the east, we'll need to find a lot of lizard men. We'll finally make it to those other heroes. I mean, they were really far from where I was going. I didn't really have a choice but to conquer all of Lustria. If I didn't do that, my vassal would not be doing well. Okay, draft master, take that one. Then we can begin to work on reducing the upkeep even further. All right, time for a battle for our new commander, Block Maw. It's a fairly big force. I mean, I've got a lot of skink cohorts and they've got what? Let's have a look over here. 42 weapon strength, very high. Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins. Savage Orc Boar Boys. 54 charge bonus. I mean, they are tough stuff. Okay, here's what we'll do. War Banner for two units, two elite units. Now, I suppose we've got to go fight it. It won't be easy, but we're going to give it a go. If I auto-resolve, I'll lose way too many. If I fight it out, I'll lose way too many. But, hey. Before we show off all the units and the battles, we need to go over what's happening. So we have a large orc army right ahead of us. We're using one of our summoned abilities to distract them, to keep them busy. We've got flying units on my right flank. I do expect to lose a sizable number. I've got to experiment with my army, but we do have skinks heading through the middle. Usually I don't do that, but I wanted them to take more damage. So my more powerful regiments of renown and blessed units and other units that are not just skink cohorts, they're moving through the left flank. They'll be attacking at least three groups of their orc boar boys. And now here comes my skinks and flying units too. We've got Lord Crow close by. We've got our Scar veteran, Karslaw, and our leader, Block Maul. Now Block Maul gets an ability called Monstrous Strength, providing quite the self augment for him. Now if you thought Nikai was fancy, look at those spins. That's some magical spins. Now the goal is just to attack them everywhere and try to survive. My right flank has less units to really help them out with tools, so we'll eventually pivot and use some magic to help out. But Nakai is at least also over here. 
just kidding. It's not Nakai. Crocs, of course, do not all look alike. Come on now. You can tell. Here comes our toad god, Lord Croak, using deliverance of Itza. Each one, one, two, and three, all have different things that are really good at fighting. You've got one that's able to handle lighter armored foes and is really only good to use against one enemy unit. You've got those who are good against multiples. And so you're just going to have to look at it and figure out the language and then just kind of chain use them back to back like we just did there. We used like what deliverance one and two doing an awesome amount of damage. And Lord Croak is just using his spirit to beat the living crap out of all these units. There's another spell that you just saw. I wanted to show you the health bars before it landed. Lord Croak was instrumental to this victory. Our poor mounted units never seemed to survive well, but then again, they were meant to be like brought out and then meant to charge in again. It's meant to be a cycle that I complete, but I was so busy trying to handle all these other lines here. It was actually fairly challenging to keep up with my one unit. Plus, there is only one. And Lord Croak is at 170 kills, but he's also wounded a lot too. So it's not like he's just been doing one thing. No, he's been hitting a lot. The enemy leader is already pretty beat up. That Orc War boss has only killed 16. It's on the left flank that we can see that my more elite units have been able to beat a lot of these enemies of ours. But they're still charging in. Like my Red Crescent Skinks, we've got my Savage Orc War Boys that have only killed four of my units. Okay. We're still hitting them. So now it gets a little bit sloppy. My Ripper Dactyls are charging in. They're probably going to end up losing a lot too. But hey, we might as well... Let them flap on in. They're just kind of meant to be kind of a temporary unit. They can be good. It really depends. When you're playing on higher difficulties, some things are not as effective because your enemies have such a big stat boost. So sometimes, like, units that might normally just tear up some other unit doesn't always do that. Here comes another attack. It's a lot less green skin to worry about. And then here comes a shield of the protective old ones and we're still hitting one of the enemy war bosses so it's just all been great ways to handle all these individual units we use our protection of quetzal just to keep one group unbreakable they got 59 kills and it looks like we've won the battle now though there's not a lot of them left so we're just chasing those savage orc arrow boys who remain and we also hit their leader too All right, I think that was adequate. I think Lord Croak, you did it. Don't look too happy about it. That battle did cost a lot, but I mean, for my new build that I haven't really used much of, it's to be expected. And it was a savage orc army that would have normally been very tough for I think any type of build outside of my brawl heavy builds for right now. Okay, you didn't level up, but we did conquer a major location, providing more income for me. Oh, hello. No. Did you get anyone new? No, you didn't. If you managed to win, though, hey, I'll be impressed. You'll have that going for you. We're losing only 502 gold per turn. Now, Nakai, we didn't do that Ogm Shard battle yet because I wanted to focus on getting some things right. done. Because we did two quest battles in our previous part. So that means on a future part, we'll do the Ogham Shard quest battle to finally get that item together. Right. And by the time we're back, too, we're going to be able to show off a few more fights. Just because I've got two armies. And as I get more gold, if I can lower my overall upkeep a little bit more, then I'll be more than happy to get better units in my secondary army. But for now, I mean, he's doing a great job. But we shall call it here. Thank you for watching. Do leave a like down below. Look forward to more tomorrow. It's going to be a longer part tomorrow. And we've got more killing to do. Oh boy.